I guess about the great, let's just ask about the granary. Could you give a little explanation of the granary? Because, you know, I've had my, some of my students or some of the people following me ask me, like, is it just like an Ave? And then it, because it, like usually, you know, they, they try to make the site is like flashy and like, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And it's it's like you can borrow the, these assets and that's it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Granary is, um, you know, I mean, granary has a long way to go as far as the flashiness goes. Um, it is uh, like it's the product of a bunch of risk and incentive research you know it's not really the product of like us trying to be as flashy and hypey as possible right. because you know the plan is for a lot of the tvl that lands in granary to go through reaper um so uh granary is our attempt and this is a, a relatively unique market like right now you have basically lending markets exchanges yield aggregators you know, is there anything else with demonstrable product market fit? Uh, stable coins, obviously, but that's a topic, you know, for another conversation. But, um, you know, as the lending market gets denser and denser, we're seeing categories open up. So it's not just like, OK, we'll take anything as a DeFi user. We're seeing, right. OK, we can now shop for the best deal. And so you know, leveraging a lot of our risk research and um, a lot of our protocol design research, we want to make Granary the best deal um, for stable coins and for network assets. And we don't really care about anything else. Um, so the goal with Granary is to be a cross-chain hub uh, for stable coins. And we're working with, um, you know, interoperability layers so that you can interact with every chain from a single source point. Um, which is something that is in the works. Uh, and really, it's like we can be better than competitors uh, just by virtue of giving users better deals, having lower exposure to risk, uh, downside risk. So when you're talking about modern portfolio theory, postmodern portfolio theory, the difference between the two is po postmodern portfolio theory takes into account extreme downside risk. So the worst case scenario for your protocol is an instance of extreme downside risk if you're a lending protocol. So where is extreme downside risk concentrated the most? Shit coins, uh, you know. Um, so by removing like absolute shit coins from our debt portfolio uh, or marginalizing them to a point where they don't even have much of an impact on our debt portfolio, we're able to right. deliver really efficient LTV ratios. And then as far as incentives, the incentive designs go, um, we can target really efficient LTV ratios out of the gate the instant we start emitting tokens. And that means we generate more revenue with the granary and our users, our lenders also get a lot more revenue. And our reserve factor is pretty low. So we're taking a very small cut of fees compared to Aave or Geist or uh, similar protocols. Right. So in terms of you, when, when deciding on adding a new asset to, to, to that product, would you lean more towards like deep liquidity versus just dampened volatility or a mixture of the two? Um, deep liquidity, low dependency risk. Um, you know, I would say less volatility. Um, I, I think it's impossible to escape volatility. I would say um, probably the most important thing for us is uh, security. So we don't want volatility as a result of an exit scam or volatility as a result right. of a dependency failure or volatility as a result of some factor that isn't within the realm of, you know, this is an ultra secure token. This is being traded back and forth. Um, it has deep liquidity. Liquidity is incentivized. And we know the te team is going to continue promoting deep liquidity. Um, and probably the the most risk on asset we have right now uh, is Boo, um, yeah. and that's probably like, I mean, that's like the phantom token to a certain extent, um, and and we're adding that now because all the leverage is rinsed out of the market. Um, so it, it's it's much that's easier risky. to add. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> it's much easier to add slightly risky assets when uh, everybody's poor, uh, because then stuff can't be uh, as easily manipulated. Um, but I feel stuff. like there's so much more. What I love about this this versus like last bear market was that there's just so much more things to do. Because last bear market, we, we we didn't have there was there was like sure there was L ones, but there was no projects, no yield, no nothing. Oh yeah, there's there nothing. It was like nothing. Like I mean, what was it like? Uh, what? Be, uh, what was it? 
Yeah, the beginning of 2020 was like when we first yeah. got Uniswap for the first time. Really, I mean, I know it came out. <laughs> but like we yeah, were barely yeah. even swapping. <laughs> we were, it's yeah, crazy. You had two pool in January 2020, 2022, or January 2020 on Curve is when two pool came out, uh, and uh, Uniswap came out after that, and Compound came out. Um, so you basically had Compound, Uniswap, Curve, uh, and otherwise it was like you know pure boredom, and then Yearn, and then Ave. And then things got really magical. But um, right. yeah, it's uh, I mean, it still feels good to be in the industry, um, which is nice. Like, I think fundamentals are stronger than ever. I think we've yeah. proven that, like, you know, we're getting caught by like, you know, stray bullets from from the CFI side of crypto. But right. at the end of the day, it's just, you know, all the all the CFI dudes are going to keep getting wrecked and all the DeFi dudes are going to keep getting richer. Uh, yeah. And that's just, you know, the long and short of it. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, DeFi ended up working.